What's up, you guys? Welcome to a brand new episode of Popcorn 10 podcast, you know, showing here on Pop Central TV, DSC 189. And of course, if you're listening to us across social media platforms or across all your streaming platforms, thank you for joining in and being part of the show. My name is Grand Prince Ita, and as per usual, it's always a great time showing up here, chatting with some of your faves and just getting to know, you know, what the top process, you know, is like, the work they're doing and everything in between. Today, I have got a really special guest for you and um, when you talk about the new generation of Nollywood and the new faces who are doing absolutely great stuff in Nollywood this name most definitely would come on is a young man who's doing exceptional stuff in the acting industry here in Nollywood and hopefully soon in Hollywood ladies and gentlemen please so, welcome the very amazing Chooks Joseph yeah 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 <laughs> <laughs> it actually felt so good hearing you say the damn thing hey. yeah, I was almost blushing but I had to you know you can't blush it's, guy. it's fine you can't blush it's okay yeah, it's a safe space thank you thank you for the kind how words. are you I'm good I mean, you look at skin is skinny. God is You great. know, smelling like you guys can smell, but smelling like yeah. money as well. That is great. Drop pounds before you go. All right. Hmm? <laughs> I'm not playing with you. How is it going? Um, great. It's it's been amazing. It's been a lot of work. It's mm. been busy schedules. It's been late nights. Booked and busy. Yeah. Come on. Well, it's, it's been great so far. I uh, can't complain. Yeah. yeah. How long have you been? Have you been? You know, acting. Um, this is my third year. Yeah, Ofi I, like officially. I, yeah, I I kind of had the idea and everything 2020, but the first time I was actually on a set, mm. I had a role and everything was April 2021. Mm. So this is yeah. Oh, that's amazing. Year. This is like a this. So this month yeah. basically is like an yeah. anniversary yeah. for you. Facts. I did not ah. even dip it like that. That's yeah. crazy. I think April fifth. What? That's yeah. like a few days ago, like yeah. two, three days ago ish. Yeah. You know. So, so That's so amazing. So happy anniversary. Happy Thank Nollywood you. anniversary. <laughs> but before you. then, I mm. done background for flatmates. Yeah. Yeah, don't work up hard. Yeah. That was 2020, yeah. between July, August. But it was just about three of them. Then mm. Rihanna also. Yeah. But I just knew I needed to be. Yeah, Star Wars lead. Was yeah. <laughs> it lead? In case you don't know, this young man has played quite a number of roles, and we're going to talk about each and every one of that. Okay. Um, I first knew about you um, from um, Linda Ikeji's movie. Yeah, yeah. Um, what, what's what's that? The title? Dark October. Dark, yeah, that. Um, that was the first time I ever saw um, your Dark October in yeah. that film by Linda Ikeji, and I was just like, hmm, this guy is going to be. You know, you know when you see people together and you just know that uh, this person amongst them is just like a shining star and it's just somehow going to, you know, shine and be as bright. And honestly, since then, it's crazy how it's been almost like a back-to-back, -back, you know, yeah. base. Well, let's talk about Dark October, mm -hmm. you know, um, by a film, of course, produced by Linda Ikeji. He had quite a number of talented actors, on, you know, on that one as well. Yeah. You played one of the leads, you know. I was the lead. The lead, actually. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, leading men but in yeah, no, no, Come no. on. I was, I was the lead, but yeah. we had like, you know, three other lead yeah. actors. But, you know, the yeah. story was told from my perspective. Absolutely. And, yeah, so what was, was that for you, seeing that that was one of the first major works that yeah. you had ever done like in Hollywood? It was a turning point for me because mm. um, that's, that's actually my first feature film. Mm -hmm. My first feature film, it's a lead role, it's an important story, mm. it's actually a story that was going to stretch me mm. based on how emotional the story was, how how much of a true life event it was and being produced by someone like Linda Ikeji. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people were going to watch it, both people that don't really like her, people that like her, you know how it is. So it, it came with a little bit of pressure for me because it's my first feature film, first lead role. Mm -hmm. You know, I had other guys that were kind of, yeah. you know, on my, on my side. So I just had to do it well. And um, at that, the time when it came in, I hadn't worked in a, in a while. I told you that was my first year. It actually came in um, October, September 2021, but we filmed October 2021. I'd only done Scood and Danny TV YouTube series, and it wasn't out yet. I had nothing out, but I went for this audition, and 
I got picked. So yeah. So you actually really one of one of the people that actually got picked via auditions. Yeah. Everything I've done is via auditions. Everything you've seen via auditions. The ones that I've done after my big break, they haven't come out. About two of them that I was called, oh, would you play this? But I still had to audition. So it, it wasn't an open audition. It mm. was more like, a yeah, audition. we have something, send a self-tape. Mm. Yeah, so I've, I've always been an audition. That's, that's interesting, because I mean, live in, in an industry where a lot of people keep saying, oh, auditions don't really work. These guys yeah. always speak people that want to peak, you know. Yeah. Just saying that your testament of that is just, yeah, you know, I've, it's fresh, like it's just brand Most new. of my friends in the industry, I met them at auditions. You know how you, know, you meet at this audition yeah. and after when is the next one? Okay, let's exchange contacts. Mm -hmm. So that's how it happened. Interesting. Um, yeah. That experience, like for you, I had seen it, right? Have you seen that movie? Like, have you sat down to see that movie? Which? I mean, you, I, we were at the, I saw you at the premiere. Yeah. That's way like 2022? 2023. 2023, February, yeah, February yeah. last year. So you, that was, you know, when I'd seen yeah. you first, you know. But have you seen the movie yourself? Yeah. What do you what think do about you your performance? Times. So I cringe at some scenes because, you know, I'm better more now. experienced now. Um, I think my craft is growing with each production I do. Mm -hmm. So I cringe at some scenes. I feel like I should have done it another way. I'll yeah. see some lines I deliver. I'll be like, ah, just do it more subtle do it this way so those are like the kind of views i yeah. get from me but i still appreciate the yeah. fact that i was in that film because that's the most emotional film i've done that's yeah. the most vulnerable i've ever been i've done other films but that film it's it's it, i call it my baby i don't know most people most of my friends laugh when i say that but i call it my baby because i did a lot of learning on 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 set so most of the scenes I watch and cringe, I actually learn about it. So after filming, I'll be like, ah, I wish I did it this way. But yeah, I actually watched it last week. I went to a friend's house and you know how they, oh, my guy is an actor. So we watched one, the most recent one. Then they were like, which other one should we see? Then we watched that one and it was good. The yeah. reception was good. Everybody was shedding tears and I, uh, and I was like the bad guy. Why, why am I the guy who didn't cry? You know, every time I've seen that thing, I haven't cried one time. So it's, it's, we're all different individuals. Yeah. Most people are More just emotional. emotional and I, I, you know, you, a... you, you are, you, you've been in the film and entertainment space mm. for a long time. You know, it's acting. Mm. Most people, they watch it like it's not acting. That's why you see more people get <gasps> emotional and they want yeah. to, you know, the other one I did where they wanted to yeah. beat me up yeah. for what I did in the film. Yeah. So that's how people just see it. Um, yeah. I cried um, when I was reading the script. I cried while we were filming. At that premiere, I cried, but after that, I just... Oh, I just knew it's wild. I was at the premiere and yeah, people were literally just, crying. Yeah, the whole. I'm just like, yeah, wait. It was, it was really emotional. I was laughing like, why are you guys yeah. crying? I don't have a stone heart, but I'm just saying like, why are you crying? It's a movie, boy. Yeah. I mean, that's the entire, you know, uh, uh, um, reason for art. Making people yeah, feel, feel, you know, like they're part of something and yeah. just, you know, be on with them. So it seems like you've actually gone on to a couple of other projects. One of very notorious ones you've done has to be Madame Koi Koi. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, <laughs> yo, bruh. bruh. <laughs> I saw a video one time yeah. where people were literally ganging up to actually yeah. beat you in so real that, life. That's what I was trying to explain to you. They don't understand it's a, it's just a film. Yeah. The girl was like, I don't like you. I don't like you. I hate you for what you did in the film, bro. I'm just, I'm just. So they met me and they were like, guy, why are you this calm? Mm. I was just acting a film. This is me. So it's just it's just one of those ones and it's like my most blown film so yeah, far. I think so. Because that video went had millions of views on TikTok, on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. It was just it was just a lot. But it was good reception because I played a very bad character, like a very terrible guy. Lache yeah. is an you idiot. You pissed me off. Lache is an idiot. You but, pissed me off. Really. But people just tend to just understand that yeah. Chooks as an individual is mm. a different person yeah. from that. I think it makes them appreciate the arts more yeah. because they see me and they expect the whole the guy with so much energy and loud, arrogant and you see me there like <laughs> like <laughs> quiet and silent and almost not talking so you just get to appreciate the fact that i can be a different person and play something different on the screens mm, interesting yeah. um 
for me yeah like i think when people when you get to that point where people literally hate you for something you did mm -hmm. it just shows that you did your job really great mm -hmm. as an actor you know the fact that people can see and actually hate on you it means that you did something great and they can actually yeah. you know you recognize that what was i mean madame koi koi how was that for you was it was it hard getting into that character uh, seeing that you're almost as opposite as the character yes it's, it was it was really uncomfortable especially the that scene yeah the rape scene yeah the rape scene um it was really uncomfortable for me to play it um thankfully that was the only scene i filmed that day and um but i think it actually helped me get into character that was the first f scene i filmed in that film yeah that was my first scene so being able to pull it off the way we pulled it off just puts me in that character throughout the one month and couple weeks we filmed that but it was it was uncomfortable. <laughs> it was uncomfortable for me because, you know, you're never hated. the guy. To... Everybody just. But I think because of how welcoming and the crew, the director, everybody was just warm. Mm. We could. We, everybody was a professional on set. We were able to differentiate last year and choose. Because after filming, I'm back to my normal quiet. Then when I have my moment of you know cracking everybody up, making my random jokes, yeah. But playing the character was hard. Yeah. It was hard, but I'm glad I pulled it off. Yeah, you did. Is there is it gonna be a return of Madame Kwai Kwai? There might be, but they killed Lashe, so oh, unless shit. they want to do a backstory. Yeah, that's true. Maybe do something like a spin That's true. Oh my god, that death was yeah. like one of the most exciting things. Yeah, it was. I had people coming to say, I'm glad they Everybody was like, yeah, Yes. Happy. Thank more god. people wanted to see like a more gruesome death. Yeah. You know, they wanted to they don't want death to last for like a longer yeah. but yeah. It yeah. is what it is. Oh my God! Listen, you guys. If, I don't know if you guys haven't seen Madame Koiko. Almost everybody has. Yeah. You know, it had a boss. You know, at the time where it did, and you know, Chooks, you know, brought it on. And let's really talk about one of the most recent ones that you've mm. done, and that is Afame Funa. <laughs> Yeah, I found my phone is currently showing now on Netflix, guys. Yeah. Um, I had seen it was when I was in the cinemas, yeah. you know, and when it just come on the cinemas, and boy, oh boy, I think that in my opinion, it was the casting was just really great. You know, I think that it was really great. Did you know you were going to be playing playing the younger version of oh yeah of um uh, uh, of of what's what's his name now um. I didn't play the young. I, most people confuse my character for the younger version of Paul of Alex Ekubo. Nah, it wasn't. Nah, it was hold the up. other slim guy. Hold up, hold up, hold up. Let me get this young thing clear Polo. right now. So there is there is younger version of um, Stanzi. Yeah, There's younger Afam. version of Alex Ekubo. Alex Ekubo. Uh, Afam is the younger version, version which is played by um, Paul, Paul, Paul of course. Yeah. And then the younger version of, of Alex, Alex Ekubo. Young Polo, which is played by Chidera. The, the, the slight fair slim girl yep no yeah Bruh. i think i think it was just yeah. because my yeah. character kind of stood out so a yeah. lot of people the funny thing is i auditioned to play young alex but um chidera was it looks more like even me if we both came on set i would definitely make him mm. i would say no give it to him so yeah he played the younger alex um younger yeah mm. young polo alex ekubo yeah, and I played Obum, which is the, the tout <laughs> and the rascal. The, so Obum was a lazy, or rather, he is the lazy guy that just wants the easy way out. That's why I see him hyping prize. Mm. Then when they are outside looking for customers, he wants to go New inside. Signs, literally. Then he sees a woman, my color, you know, all, all them things. So he's just like a typical lazy but yeah. slightly hardworking. Yeah. Still. yeah, and you're Igbo, so yeah, Igbo, you've so. experienced that. So you yeah, actually, like... at some point, um, when I finished secondary school, um, my where I grew up was a little bit crazy. So my dad did not want me to be staying at home while I was waiting for admission. So he made me go to my one of my uncle's shop to learn so they weren't really traders my uncle used to sew something so i was just the guy that was always helping him write his customer thing like um people that come to his shop to buy stuff or sew stuff then once they want to get materials i take them around the market so literally yeah but, wow. but that was just for like six months six seven months yeah, even though it was a month yeah so that was actually the first time I witnessed firsthand mm. how this apprenticeship thing worked. works. Because 
I had there were lots of them in the market. I even know some of them now that are big big boys, they have their shops. I kept in touch with a few of them. So that was like an experience for wow. me then. Yeah. Yeah. I mean it, just imagine experiencing that in real life and yeah. actually just coming to play. Yeah. Yeah. So that you know, it felt really easy to come. Great, great. Yeah. In all of these films that you've done, you know, yeah. which would you say is your fave? Like the one that you kind of like hold a bit closer to your heart. Like I mentioned, it's Dark October because that's my first. These other ones, I was not the lead actor. I just, <laughs> my character just happened to shine. But on Dark October, I was the lead actor. It was, it was just like an introduction into the industry for me. That was like the first time I had like traffic on my page. I had like over a million impressions and everything. Then it, it was just like a very special film because because of the story, the story is, I knew about that story when I was about entering uni. Mm -hmm. Then coming to play it, it mm. was just like, <sighs> okay. That was one of the points or things that actually pressured me a bit. So I think that's my favorite one. Mm. But if we want to talk about the most fulfilling one, I think it's last year on Madame Koi Koi because till tomorrow, if I post pictures anywhere, I'm like, you eat this weekend, boy. Lashe, lashe, lashe. Anytime, any day, especially on Twitter. Then coupled with a boom now, so it's like, yeah. I have a bad rep. Yeah. So, but it's calm. Yeah. As long as they keep casting me. <laughs> I'll be fine. <laughs> yeah, so I think Dark October is my favorite one, but the most fulfilling yeah. one has to be Madame Koyko. That, that film went viral. Yeah, they, they, a lot of people. TikTok, yeah. even people outside Nigeria, because you know, almost everybody went to secondary school. Everybody went to secondary yeah. school. And even if you did not go to a boarding school, you your probably cousins heard of or your friends or your neighbors yeah. that went to boarding school, we come with um, Madame Koi Koi, um, Bush Baby, all them, all them myths they talk about in secondary school. So everybody was just curious to know, okay, this thing we've been hearing about, how would it play out in film? And the film came out and it was actually a good film. So yeah, it, it was really a viral film. Yeah, I like that for you, honestly. You know, it's just, and to, to be honest, like I think your career picked up really great, to be honest. Like yeah. you're barely three years now yeah. and you've done cinema movies, you've done Netflix original. Yeah. No, it wasn't an original. It wasn't original, no. but I mean, it was showing yeah, on it Netflix. Was, it was it, it streamed, was, yeah. it premiered on Netflix. Yeah, it was. It actually went straight to yeah, Netflix. Netflix. It didn't, you know, yeah, go to the cinema time. first or yeah. anything. And then you've also done. I don't know if you've done YouTube. You've done YouTube films. Yeah, I have. Uh, yeah, I've done. I've, I've done YouTube films, but you know how it is. That's yeah. like a different space. Yo. Space. And I did the YouTube film. I have. It's it's just one. It's actually a very good film. Then I've done a number of them that will probably come out, like two or three yeah, YouTube films. Then I also have two things coming on Prime. We'll talk a bit about all Ooh, <laughs> okay. Okay, look yeah. at that. Sounds like a lot of money. Yeah, yeah. Not really. You know how it is. I don't know how it is. The, the way it is, is you know, you're, you're trying to do as much work as you can. Yeah. You're not really focused. I think my, for me, mm -hmm. not really too focused on the money because if I keep saying no because of money, I won't have work to back up requesting yeah. for more money. But now, maybe after the ones I have and yeah. I make like a proper, yeah. what, what, the what money should up. I say? Like, um, I have stuff, I have work to show that, okay, if I request for this particular amount, mm. you'd be like, yeah, he's deserving of it yeah. because the way the industry works, bro, you have to grind before you start making that money. Yeah. At least for some people, then some people you do like a, a film or two, you blow out proper. Yeah. You start making. Yeah. So. Do you think you've blown? Not really, but I think I'm there. I'm getting there because every day someone recognizes me. Every day, like every day, I don't. I don't even like do. Normally, I like doing my chores myself, going to get fuel and all them things going to supermarket myself. I don't do that anymore because anywhere I go, either they remember you from Madame Koi Koi, which is like the most viral one, or Dark October, or recently, Afa Mefuna. Ah, yeah, that boy, that's details, all them, all them things. So I, I, I wouldn't say I'm blown out, but I'm, I'm getting there. I'm on the come up, yeah. Interesting. So we're going to go on a quick break now, ladies and gentlemen. When we are back from this break, we do have more conversations with Chuck's Joseph, of course. More talks and everything with him. This is Popcorn 10 Podcast. See you in a bit.
Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. It is still Popcorn 10 right here, and we're happy that you're still there watching from wherever it is that you are watching us from. Chooks Joseph is still here. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Great. Are you this calm? Like, oh yeah. Uh, so that's the thing. Because like of you're so you're 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 so calm. Yeah, that's almost too calm. Yeah. You know, so like sometimes people think I pretend, but I'm just a very lazy person in real life. <laughs> Not lazy, but I don't have. I, I'm so much. I'm big on the energy conservation. Mm -hmm. So what the energy you so are you? So what, what are you saving the energy for? Yeah, for when I have to be on the screen. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but that's just been me. I don't have too much strength. Really. Yeah. By the way, I've seen jokes at, like a lot of times. We meet a lot of times at like you know premieres and events and stuff. And honestly, his energy is always like this. It's just calm. <laughs> if you just see him in one corner, just sitting and just sipping whatever he's sipping yeah, and just yeah, that, calm. That's, that's where you see. You know, wherever they are sipping things, that's where I'm always like, sip, take a small chop, sip and look, yeah, and observe. Uh. Whenever I need that energy on the red carpet, then I bring it out. Yeah. yeah I just think I have. Um, it's not a disorder, but I have like multiple personalities. Yeah. But I think this is the um, alpha. Nah, that's, I know they call it suppressive and there's the other word. So mm. I have like the bigger personality, which is, I have my moments. Mm. Catch me outside. You caught me outside. <laughs> you know, that the energy can be a little bit up. So right, so. right. I know, I know, I know, I know. Interesting. Um, let's talk about the MVCs this year. Oh. Have you seen the nominations? Yes. How do you feel about the nominations? I feel great about it because at least two actors that are from our film, Madame Koi Koi, like someone actually had, people I had actually had like one-on-one -on -one scenes with. Screen time. The lady that... Absolutely. You know, that, raped, that Lachet raped, not me. Mm. And you of know, course, she got nominated Irriti. then. Um, Mother Superior, Irriti Doyle, mm -hmm. you know. It was an amazing thing to see. Then also, I, I was on... I am on Masquerades of Aniedo. Oh. So that was... I think it bagged two nominations or one. So it, it was exciting for me to see. So, mm. yeah, you know. Yeah, I mean, do you look forward to, you know, maybe getting nominated any, anytime soon? Uh, anytime soon yeah of course you know you do work and you expect it to you know get mm. some sort of accolades yeah, yeah so i yeah. think i think um when the time is right right um um for me i think the nominations were, were, were you know were okay but yeah. there's some names that i wanted to see that i didn't see oh yeah of course we all had we all had like chimese did an amazing absolutely with breath of, breath of life, breath of life. Yeah, what is there was people? actually really surprising yeah. yeah the only justification for that they would ever do is if they actually give chimese like you know trailblazer of the year he's been around for a minute now. yeah if it fits him then yeah i mean but when pisola won it she was around for a bit when Lala won, she was around for a bit, you That's know, true. you know, but I mean, that was heartbreaking as well. Is there another name that you hoped you had seen on the list? Uh, I can't. Be. Okay, I even forgot, after me for now, so since Stan is a oh, yeah. best actor, yeah. Alex Ekubo, yeah. that, those are like films, yeah. and then the yeah. writer Sandra also, yeah. Yeah, that, that's actually a good one. Yeah. Uh, I can't think of anybody, it's Chimeze that, that was yeah. like, okay, then maybe um, Shinene, um, the G on um, Toby Makinde. Oh yeah, yeah Tribe of G but they already nominated so Yeah, I feel like they, didn't they could have. They, they could I have. Like, if they I wanted feel like to. They didn't want to put two people from the same. <sighs> Timini has won this award before. No, but he did great in that film. Of course, he deserves the awards. Yeah, deserves Timini deserves the awards he's gotten. Uh, Ele Elevator Baby. Um, the way he got, oh, and I, I'm just saying best. that he has won the best actor, before. you know, uh, well, he was award nominated before. for best supporting, so he hasn't won best supporting before. I feel like, well, in my opinion, they yeah. should have put both of them in that category. same, same. And maybe they have a thing around. No, 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 no. Because before. last year they put Iniedo, they've also put um, Insect Batum yeah. from. Um, shanty, shanty town in the same category so it was actually really surprising yeah. timini's wasn't surprising for me to see yeah he was a good he pulled off that yeah, way. yeah. but toby like, mackin i really uh, yeah, was hoping but toby, that toby, toby also did really great yeah. because his character stood up everybody see that's yeah, the Uzi thing I, too that's the thing about film yeah the people the jury and the people that select i feel like they have pointers Mm. They have things because if you want me to talk, Lasha did great in Madame Koi Koi also. It should have been best support and if I want to speak for myself. As you should. I don't those are not things you have to dwell on because you were you were not there in the room to I don't know say, what. okay, this is the point, these are the things people or what they saw for them to make 
or nominate you. But personally, when we are talking about personal opinions, like Toby deserved it to some extent. Oh. But you know, someone we already have representation. Jen um, Funke um, got nominated. Then Timini got nominated. So it should be a win for them. Yeah. But based on personally, personally, you know, you'd want to have the award for yourself. But generally, awards are just it's good for your craft and everything. But man, it's it's people making these decisions. Yeah. yeah. It's not like it's an artificial intelligence making. Even artificial intelligence can be wrong. So I don't. I really don't understand yeah. the dynamics. What, yeah, I feel you. What the would be the most fulfilling thing? Fulfilling thing for you as an actor? As an actor, to be able to. I think it's even coming, to be able to inspire people to do stuff just because they saw me acting. Mm. Like when Madame Koi Koi came out and you know I was everywhere. Then I went on a podcast. I spoke about something. Then one guy that's an artist, mm-hmm. he just texted me that he's followed my story for a minute. Mm-hmm. That the fact that you know I'm doing really great like this inspired him to start drawing again. That was how fulfilling. That was a very short text, but it made me feel great. Those are like the things that you know would come my way. Mm-hmm. Just being able to inspire people I grew up with, mm-hmm. then making some good bread, money to be able to take care of my family then taking this thing international because I feel like we're at that point in Hollywood where we should have Nigerian characters in Hollywood films you know how they have Indian characters or even make a Nigerian film that is Hollywood that should be premiered in the US and all that so I feel like when I'm able to make that crossover I'm not rushing myself it could be any time in my career I feel like this point but the most feeling one for me would just be able to inspire people because mm. there are people that I, I looked up to mm. I looked at their journey and I got inspired to actually like keep pushing my craft mm. so if I can be able to do that for others and you know make some bread while at it and you know take my shit international mm. I think that that would be that would interesting be um how old are you how old am I mm-hmm. I'm I mean, old enough. what <laughs> I'm old enough I mean I'm just I'm, I'm just my checking my late 20s um yeah. Right, so I, I'm, I'm asking because, I mean, you know how Nollywood is right now. To be honest, you know, they are, they are, how do I call them now? Like, they're sets, mm. right? Mm. We can say they're sets in Nollywood. Yeah, sure, they You are. know, because you can say, oh, the Jim Ike, Ramsey yeah. Noah set. Yeah. There is the Patience, his own call, um, mm. uh, 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 Sam Didi, Nkemo okay, okay. set. Then there is the younger set now, um, the... Who do we even use now as an example? Them, they and me, Timmy. There is a day and me. Are they really? They're not that old. They are still young, you know. Are, but you, that's, you their your, that's their set. They and me, Kunle Remy, K and D, K K and D. K and D is actually yeah, yeah from. But yeah. I think maybe new. Yeah. Maybe, maybe mainstream. Yeah. yeah maybe Nancy. Yeah, Nancy yeah, you know, yes. and the rest. And then there is now you guys who are. Well, like, there is actually people before us. There is the Genoviva. The far from home guys, Mike, Chimezemo, Tomiwa Tegbe. So you wouldn't put them in. Oh right, no, they're all there. Yeah, they, they, they've, they've done sugar. Done, yeah, they've, they've done, done that. They've done cassava. Then there's Emeka, Wambaracha. I mean, yeah. Ooh, they've done, yeah. They've done cassava, sugar before us. So if you are calling new generation Nollywood, yeah. you might have to call them first before you call myself, Ade, Paul, and um, the other guy like that with me so. interesting look at that so there's an entire yeah there's an class entire, it's, it's, yeah. class of yeah class, class of. of so i think we we should be class of 21 yeah but because even like most of the people like just called now that in my class they've been there before me but i think our our major thing was cooled mm. that's paul a day myself cam yeah and Tommy or Joe is kind of in between yeah. the Mikey, but, but I think she's in our set also. But maybe because of you know how big Fat yeah, Ruby was, then Ruby. Oh yeah, see Ruby. So the where's the Ruby? Your set? I, I can't say. Okay, let, let, let me, I'll, honestly, I'll say, I'll say I, I like they, to. They will be the mm, early people of our set. I like to honestly. I like to put all of in the same. Okay, it's the, fair. because at the end of the day, like it's when you say new faces in yeah, Hollywood, you guys are like the new faces. Yeah, but, you know, if you look at been, it, yeah, you've been yeah. there for they've been there for a long yeah. time. But like, 
in terms of like yeah, we could we could you we know could, we could put it that way they've put in the work yeah right they have. they've done the work like Most of those guys i called a I lot used to of go them to the like instagram to so me why yeah. For instance, right? That that's that's yeah, name. Tomiwa Tebe. So yeah, Tomiwa Tebe. That guy has worked hard. Emeka Wambro, he has done projects from way back. Life the funny thing is, Emeka doesn't look like he's yeah. getting any time old. But <laughs> you know, a lot of these folks have actually put in the work and are doing extremely yeah. well. But just seeing all of you together, it's like, oh, these are just the new faces of yeah, Hollywood. That, that's so in like 20, 30 years, yeah. you know. You know, 20, 30 years from now, you guys are now going to be like the older ones where we look at your your, your movies from where we're we'll like, yo, yeah. this is, you know. True. Is there anybody in the industry that you're hoping to eventually work with? Uh, yeah, there's a, I've not even worked with anybody yet. <laughs> I've not worked with a lot of people, like from actors to producers mm. to directors. Like, there's a lot of them. A yeah. lot of them. I've just done three films, or three major honestly, films. Honestly, yeah, I've just done three films. But just three films you've done, like, yeah. it's wild because, like, these three films you've done. Yeah, I've just done three films. Then Masquerades of Anyedo, that's like um, a DSTV TV series, Schooled, Ndani TV web series. That's it. That's okay, wild. Then, then leaked kind of multi choice show max. Yeah. Dawn of the Night. But, like, it's just been three major films. Wild. Then Dawn of the Night and Leaked. Show Are you working on anything at the moment? Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm actually, I should be on set from Thursday. Okay. Yeah, that's another That's another one I'm looking forward to. Ooh, who's on it? Tell year. me. Hmm? Who's on it? Tomio. Tomio Joy is on it. She's the lead. Ooh. Yeah, she's our number one. Um, I am on it. Um, Paul Nadeke, I mentioned, is on it. Ade. Ade Lua Akintoba is on it. Then Kem. Kem is on it. Then Michael Dapper is one of the new guys. Also. Hey. Yeah, he's on here. Like it's, it's it's a young ensemble of cast. Yeah, I'm excited about it's that. Who's directing it? It's a tech it? film. Yeah, so oh, yeah. let's go. Yeah, Sounds it's, like it's gonna be good already. Yeah, it's, good. it's going to be good, and I hope from the from the way they have it packaged, and mm. I think it's going straight to like the major platforms. Mm. So that's another that's one it. we're looking. For. You mentioned earlier that you have stuff coming on Prime. Oh yeah. So I have like two films on coming on Prime. I think one will come to the cinemas first before Prime. It's a football film. Yeah, that one. Then there's Uche Jumbo one. film? Huh? Uche no, Jumbo. No, no, no. Oh, that's no, I wasn't. Because I saw that at Afri, yeah, and I was thinking, yeah, oh, I didn't see it's it. It's another one. Yeah. It's done by I, you know how all these NDAs and things, so I don't know if they would want me talking about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, it's fine. So yeah. it's done by um one of the big guys right now, like a big production. Mm. Yeah, so let's see, let's yeah. see. Let's then see I, there's another one which which is like something I actually like put in a lot of work to do. Yeah, by until that's coming also. It's like a very dangerous film. Dangerous film. Dangerous. Yeah. dangerous. <laughs> I played like a really crazy psychotic character. I was carrying guns. Yeah. Hey. Ah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. We should run, no? No, you people should not run, I beg. Ah, that's crazy. Yeah. It looks like 2024 is your year, uh, you know. Uh, like, I feel like every year has to be my year. Uh-uh. From, uh. <laughs> Come on. Year. I just have to just keep working. Yeah. Because, you know, people at the top, they don't just get to the top by doing a you bit of relax. See, I'm ready to work around the clock. Because even when I'm not working, I'm up around the clock. So I'd rather just be working. So, you know, there's, I mean, talk with some people to, you know, do some stuff. So it's, it's looking busy. I think I don't even have any free dates till <laughs> August. Most booked. Yeah. Most I'm, booked. I'm, I'm really grateful for it yeah, because there were moments I used to dream, I used to be in my house when I just had like one film I'd done. You know, I'd just be in my house two, three months, no work. Just maybe one or two things. Well, you no, know, everything has its time and season. Yeah, and I think, you know, once is your time, you just have to work and work good so that once the film is out, people will not see it and ah, wait and be that nah. So you have to do it well so they'll call you again. And you just have to do it well because you know, anything worth doing is worth doing well. So yeah. 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 I like that for you. Um I mean, is, is, is there any um, anything that you wish you had done when you started that you, like if you could go back to change something, is there anything you wish you you, you would have done um, before now? Uh, the only thing I wish is, I wish I started a little bit earlier. 
maybe when I was in school or immediately I finished school. But the truth is, even the way I started acting was just out of, it just kind of happened. It just kind of happened. I did Mr. I Do. Then, oh, yeah, the I was the first runner up. Yeah. So I was either going to, there was a fashion class that was going on around then, or go to Rare Arts, which is a film school. I just chose Rare Arts because I've always been like someone that likes watching films. Mm -hmm. But I never thought of myself as someone that wanted to act. But I think we did a play in camp then, Twitch and the guys in House of Twitch kind of saw something. So they encouraged me to try um, applying because it was a number of us from this idea that applied for Rare Arts. So I got in and that was where everything started. So in my head, I wish I started like maybe 2018 or 2017 or 2016. That's timing is the best. Yeah, but all the same. I just feel like I think I started at the right time because yeah. I came in a little bit more experienced with life. Mm -hmm. So there are some things in the industry that don't really freak me like yeah. that. Yeah, so, yeah. But to an extent, I just feel like, yeah. you know, it would have been nice to be 21 and popping. <laughs> <laughs> to be 20 and popping, you know, you make money. But I just feel like everything just happens at yeah. when it's supposed to happen. Yeah. Yeah. What's the most embarrassing thing anybody in the industry has ever said to you, said or done to you? Uh, I think it was on my first set. I wouldn't say it was embarrassing per se, but my acting wasn't really great. So that, that actor, he called me aside and told me I needed some work that I should put it. And I think I'm great. I'm very grateful to him. I don't know if he'd want me to call his name, but I'm grateful to him. What's that? For <laughs> it, it's day me. We were on set together and, and I think he did it out of love. So that's why I, I would say it's not really embarrassing. He said that to me and he sent me one master class thing I had to learn. So that was even when I knew okay, I needed more training before I went to Urban Life Creative Academy. So it wasn't really embarrassing, but that, at that time, I felt some type of way, ah, I'm a, but I'm glad he said that to me because maybe I wouldn't have put in the kind of yeah. work because after that, I did a lot of work. I worked on myself. I was acting then. Mm -mm. So he just used to always just tell me, I just do it calm, do it this way. So yeah, I wouldn't say it was embarrassing. Yeah. But the, I think me being on that set at some point, I was doing some embarrassing things with my acting. I was overacting. I was doing too much gesticulation. I was just doing too much. So yeah, that's. I think that that would be. Yeah. I've, I've not really it had, sounds good. Your growth yeah. is just very. It sounds very interesting. You know, yeah. to see that you've done all of these things and where you are now. Yeah. And honestly moving from here i just wish you like the best you know that life Thank has you. got you know what would you say to your fans and people who have been supporting you from day one my fans <laughs> my fans thank you so much for <laughs> so my fans like two times like oh i don't have fun you guys so humble ah. thank you so may much you blow me. please Amen. and when you blow my pride come have small pride because you uh, are no, too humble no, trust me I do, the industry I do. doesn't like calm people the industry doesn't the, Actually, the industry doesn't like humble people. But, but the thing I'm is, just the, joking. The thing, is, the thing is, I have pride. I carry myself with pride, but I don't have to rub it all over your face and mm. not be arrogant about it. Mm -hmm. When I need my pride and when I need my ego to come, come on, act a lot more. Oh man, I just, <laughs> this is just me. Life is not as serious for me, so that's, that's why I'm always just. So my fans, thank you guys for chilling and rocking with me so far. Thank you guys for supporting anything and everything I do. Mm. Thank you guys for hating on the characters I play and making it trend, you know, and still loving chooks and everything. So, yeah, and be rest assured that you guys will be so proud of me with everything I have coming. Yeah, mm. just keep it locked with me. Mm. Would you do OnlyFans? Oh yeah, I could do OnlyFans, but OnlyFans for monologues. <laughs> So Chooks, thank you so much for actually coming. This has been such a great conversation. Yeah, and we appreciate it. Please stay calm. Keep on staying as calm. <laughs> and marriage, this is why everyone is getting married this year like this. Okay. Marriage bells ringing. <coughs> <coughs> what does that mean? You're going to invite me to your wedding? Ah, we're talking you about you. Me? <laughs> you, okay. I think I still have like um, five years to be a bachelor. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not that old. What does that mean, bro? Five years. But I could meet someone in the next two. Also, you're years. single. Oh yeah, I'm very single. Okay, well, you probably have heard though. For those of you that keep asking, I'm sure. What's your DM like? My DM. Mm. Like, what's the craziest thing anybody has said? Uh, we can't say that. You can say it. Why not? Trust me, it's messy. 
Hey, yeah. you people are <laughs> nasty. Yo. It's, it's all good. Crazy. I mean, go to the game. You can hear a single <laughs> now and all of that. But guys, thank you for actually watching this interview with, with Chucks and I. I am going to go now to tell you what you should watch this week. And right after, I'll be saying my goodbyes right here on Popcorn Time. Now, here is what you should watch this week. A Joshek Bo is currently showing in Nigerian cinemas, and I think that is doing pretty much good. Um, it's a film about a family about to marry their children, but they need to convey in Ibadan just before the marriage happens the very next day. And this means that the film is situated around 24 hours, and you already know it is kind of difficult to make an entire film to have situations across 24 hours. But filmmakers from this one were able to do this. Uh, this film is directed by Karide Kazemi. It has the likes of Tomika Ideoye. It has the likes of Mike Afolarin. It has the likes of Ronke Oshori. Uh, Deami also is in this one. Uh, Bolaji is on this film as well. Timina Gwaso is on this one as well. Kanaga Junior to mention but a few. Now, a stellar cast members bring their absolute A game to this one is one of the reasons why you should check this film out. You're gonna laugh, you're gonna cry, you're gonna get angry at some characters, and you're just gonna laugh your hearts out at some point. I saw this one, I'm just like, no, it's good. I do have a couple of concerns. For example, why did Dayami Okunawa's character change his outfit at some point, you know? I thought it was a 24 hours movement. So what happened, you know? I'm just wondering what happened there. And I just really wish that Tomike and Mike's character were a bit closer, seeing that they were husband and wife to be. The party scene was absolutely lit. Listen, represented the proper Yoruba essence of weddings. And I love, love, love to see that. Everything was realistic. Some scenes did drag a bit. But in the end, I'm sure you're gonna laugh. You're gonna be happy. You're gonna be joyous. Rating this film over 10, I will give it a very good seven over 10 because I mean uh, Nollywood is doing great Kaida Kazum shout out to you for directing the masterpiece executive producer shout out to you Balaji and the rest you guys did such an excellent job so yeah I just like the film I think you should check out this week check it out and let us know what you think about it thank you for watching the show this week follow us on social media platforms at this is pop central pop central tv people of pop underscore underscore of course popcorn 10 and popcorn 10 underscore my name is grand prince Ita. it's always a great time showing up here talking films movies and everything in between goodbye and have a nice life.